Good morning. Welcome to Christ the Divine Shepherd Parish. Thank you for being here with us today. Today is the first Sunday of Advent, Year B. Our readings may be found at number 859 in the Missal. Please silence all electronic devices in respect for the sanctity of the liturgy. Following the canter, please join in the refrain, Come, come, Emmanuel, come, Emmanuel.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. My brothers and sisters, let us call to mind our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, Almighty God and Prince of Peace, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. The Son of God and Son of Mary, Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. Your Word made flesh and splendor of the Father, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Grant your faithful, we pray, Almighty God, the resolve to run forth to meet your Christ with righteous deeds at his coming, so that gathered at his right hand, they may be worthy to possess the heavenly kingdom. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. This time I invite forward those children who are participating in the Children's Liturgy of the Word. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. You, Lord, are our Father, our Redeemer, you are named forever. Why do you let us wander, O Lord, from your ways and harden our hearts so that we fear you not? Return for the sake of your servants, the tribes of your heritage. Oh, that you would rend the heavens and come down with the mountains quaking before you. While you wrought awesome deeds we could not hope for, such as they had not heard of from of old. No ear has ever heard, no eye has ever seen any God but you doing such deeds for those who wait for him. Would that you might meet us doing right, that we were mindful of you in our ways. Behold, you are angry and we are sinful. All of us have become like unclean people. Our good deeds are like polluted rags. We have all withered like leaves, and your guilt carries us away like the wind. There is none who calls upon your name, who rouses himself to cling to you. For you have hidden your face from us, and have delivered us up to our guilt. Yet, O oh Lord, you are our Father. We are the clay and you the potter. We are the work of your hands. The word of the Lord. The response can be found on page 60.
A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I give thanks to my God always on your account for the grace of God bestowed on you in Christ Jesus, that in him you were enriched in every way, with all discourse and all knowledge, as the testimony to Christ was confirmed among you, so that you are not lacking in any spiritual gift as you wait for the revelation of our Lord Jesus Christ. He will keep you firm to the end, irreproachable on the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful, and by him you were called to fellowship with his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. And Reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory Jesus to the said to his disciples, Be watchful, be alert. You do not know when the time will come. It is like a man traveling abroad. He leaves home and places his servants in charge, each with his own work, and orders a gatekeeper to be on the watch. Watch, therefore, you do not know when the Lord of the house is coming whether it is in the evening or at midnight or a cockcrow or in the morning. May he not come suddenly and find you sleeping. What I say to you, I say to all, watch. The Gospel of the Lord. So I did kind of a fun thing last week. I left town. I just, I didn't know the weather was going to do what it did, but boy did I time that right. I, um, I have a couple of priest friends in the Archdiocese of Mobile down in Alabama. And a number of years ago, I had invited one of them to come to my parish and, and preach a mission during Lent. And he kept saying that one of these days I was going to have to return the favor. Well, the year after he came up to my place, I got transferred, and then he got transferred, and then I got transferred again, and then COVID hit, and then I got transferred again. But finally, I think my life has settled down enough that, that I could actually do this. So I went down to Mobile for the, the first time ever, where of course they said to me, y'all brought the cold weather with you, to which I said, y'all, it's 40 degrees, that's not cold. It's like 20 back home and snowing. I'm, I might stay here. It didn't. It, was, it never got below freezing. The gas is like a dollar cheaper per gallon. And the food, y'all, the food is good down there. And I like y'all more than yins. I, I'm just, I came home, but sometimes. Anyway, it was a good trip. Um, so I had to preach. I was asked to preach about the Eucharistic revival and Advent at the same time, and I think I did an okay job of it. The first night I talked for 45 minutes. I didn't know I could do that. 
but now that I did, it was kind of fun. <laughs> Kickoff's not till one, so just get comfortable. I'm going to see how this goes. Uh, <clears throat> the, um, the worst part about this trip was on Sunday. Because as, as intelligent as I like to think I am, sometimes I lack common sense, I decided to fly on the busiest air travel day of the year. And to get to cities in the Deep South, there's one airport in particular that you connect through, Atlanta's Hartsfield-Jackson Airport, the busiest airport in the world. Do you know what Sunday was like for me? It took years off of my time in purgatory. <laughs> there were people, and there were people at that airport, I like to think I'm a pretty savvy traveler, or at least I have done this before, and I kind of know what to expect, but there were clearly people in that airport that had never seen an airplane before in their life. They were so confused as to what was going on. And um, I don't know, like, I guess it's just me because I'm kind of shy and an introvert, but like, if I do something stupid, I don't want to draw other people's attention to it. Well, I guess there are some people that when they do things that are dumb, they want everyone to know how dumb they are. Maybe they don't realize that they're being dumb, that's the thing, but walking through the, the concourse and where I was passing a gate where there was, there was this one family of people, there were, there were only these three folks standing there, the rest of the gate was empty and the plane was gone. And, and they were like arguing with themselves loudly enough that the rest of the airport could hear them. I guess they wanted us to pay attention. And the guy's looking at his boarding pass and he says, well, it says right here, that's what he sounded like, says right here that the airplane departs at 11.15. Well, it's 11.15, where's the dang plane? It departed. It's 11.50. Like, it also says right there on your dang boarding pass that boarding begins at like 10.30. Where were you? What are you looking for? It's gone. That's a good question for Advent. What are you looking for? That's a question that Jesus asks at the beginning of his public ministry. And so maybe it's a good question to ask at the beginning of our liturgical year. What are you looking for as you celebrate the season of Advent? I mean, the easy answer is that you're looking forward to Christmas, right? And that's the first sense of Advent, that we're anticipating the celebration of the birth of our Lord. We're anticipating celebrating the incarnation when the Word becomes flesh and dwells among us. And that doesn't really take a whole lot of explanation. Even people that don't have faith are looking forward to that. They decorated the stores the day after Halloween. Okay, they decorated the stores like a week before Halloween to get us ready for Christmas. Everyone knows that that's what we're looking forward to. But there's another thing that we should be looking forward to as we celebrate Advent. We should be looking forward to the second coming of Christ at the end of time. And our readings, especially in the first half of Advent, kind of take that tone. That we're looking forward to his coming again in glory. We're looking forward to the time when he makes all things in all, when he brings everything to its completion, when he eliminates the suffering and evils and injustices of this world and establishes a new and eternal kingdom, a kingdom of light and peace, of love and joy and hope and all of those good things. And so Jesus reminds his disciples in the gospel that they need to be watchful. They need to be alert. They don't know when this day is going to come. And what he's afraid of for them is that they might fall into complacency. Well, it didn't come today. We can probably, probably guess that it's not going to come again tomorrow either. We can just, we can, we, we, we can relax. I don't have to be so careful. I think we all fall into that trap spiritually. Presumably, we're all people that that want to be people of prayer. We're all people that want to grow closer to the Lord. But it gets real easy sometimes to fall into this, this sense of complacency and start to push our spiritual lives to the background a little bit. You know, life is crazy and, and we get super busy. And so maybe we don't say any prayers in the morning. And all of a sudden we realize, I haven't prayed today, but I got all this stuff I got to do. Well, let me get this stuff done first, and I'll pray a little bit later. I'll, I'll make it up to you, Lord. But then a little bit later comes, and now you've got all these other things going on. Now, I know I should do that, but, 
but I can't right now. I have to get these other things done first. And so you push it off again. And then it gets to the end of the day. And you're exhausted. And you just want to go to sleep. And you haven't prayed. And it's, Lord, I'll just, I'll pray tomorrow. I really got to get to bed. It's late. And then tomorrow morning comes. The same thing happens. And the same thing happens. And the same thing happens. And our desire to pray never gets fulfilled because we let all of this other stuff, I don't know, just distract us from it. Jesus reminds us to be watchful and alert. Those other things that distract us will eventually not matter. But that time spent in prayer, that time spent growing in communion with the Lord, that's the only thing that matters. And if we start to allow ourselves to get too comfortable, too complacent, or too lazy, we're going to lose out on everything that it is that he's promising us, everything that it is that he wants to do for us. Even the first reading, you know, Isaiah, I think, is he's looking forward to the coming of the Messiah, but if you really pay attention to that reading and the way he's talking about this Messiah coming, he's anticipating the end. He's anticipating the restoration of the kingdom, but also the time when God is going to bring everything to completion. And Isaiah is working hundreds of years before the Messiah even comes. There's always been this sense that the people of God have to be watchful and alert and not allow themselves to get distracted by so many different things. But there's a third thing that we look forward to in Advent as well, and this is the one that, that maybe we don't think about as much. And I'm, I'm stealing this idea from St. Bernard of Clairvaux. And the idea that the third coming of Jesus that we're looking forward to in Advent is his coming to us in the sacraments, particularly in the Eucharist. And that one, you would think, is something that we would think of more often, considering how often we celebrate the sacraments, but it's, it's perhaps the hardest one to think about. Because it's easy to think about Jesus' first coming at the first Christmas. Like everyone has a nativity scene. Everyone knows, or at least has kind of an idea of what that looks like. And everyone knows what the second coming is going to look like. Well, we have no idea, but we have, we have ideas as to what that's going to be. We know there's going to be an end. But that third coming, it's a mystical sort of thing. It's a sacramental sort of thing. And sometimes it's hard to see Jesus in that sacrament, even though he's the one that's doing all the work. Because you can't physically see him in those moments. But he's there for us to, to wash away our sins and to make us members of his body at our baptism. And he's there to send the Holy Spirit to strengthen us at confirmation. He's with us as he blesses our marriages and, and gives us the grace to be fruitful and to multiply and to be a witness to the world. He's there in the confessional to forgive our sins. He's with us in the hospitals and the nursing homes when, when people are anointed to give them comfort and strength. And he's certainly with us at this altar when he gives himself to us in the Eucharist so that we might have the strength to be his witnesses in the world, that we can go out and do the work of building up his kingdom. But are we watchful and alert when we come to the celebration of those sacraments? Do we see him in those moments? Or do we just do these things because we do these things? It's 11 o'clock on Sunday morning, so I go to Mass. Hopefully he'll get, out, he'll get me out of there by 11.50. We'll see. Or when we get here, do we see the crucified one on the altar? Do we see the one that took on flesh and will come again giving himself to us out of love. Do we recognize him in this coming? Because if we're not seeing him in the sacraments, if we're not acknowledging his presence when he's here before us, what's the point in celebrating Christmas? Because we wouldn't recognize him then either. At that first Christmas, he wasn't recognized by the rulers of the world. He was recognized by the lowly and the outcast and by foreigners because they were watchful and alert. If we dare to call ourselves his followers, then we need to be as watchful and alert as they were. 
We should recognize his presence when he comes before us. And we should rejoice to be called to receive him in this way. And we should share that good news with other people. As we look forward to the great celebration of Christmas, as we look forward to the establishment of the kingdom of God, let us rejoice in this present moment that we are loved enough by God that he will come here to dwell among us sacramentally and give himself to us in these sacraments and give himself to us in such a way that empowers us to do the work of building up his kingdom here on earth so that one day we can be happy with him in the kingdom of heaven. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven by the Holy Spirit, was incarnate with the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. With trust and confidence in our Heavenly Father, let us place our petitions before him. Please respond, Lord, hear our prayer. For all bishops, may the voice of Christ always be their guide in their stewardship of his church. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For an increase in vocations, may God call forth priests, deacons, sisters, and brothers in service to his people. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those entrusted with political responsibility and leadership, may Christ grant them prudence to work always for what is good, to keep them mindful in the ways of the Lord. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who feel anxiety or despair, may the Holy Spirit help them in recognizing God as a reason for their hope. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of us gathered here on this first Sunday of Advent, may God enkindle in our hearts the fire of his love. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our class and the right of Christian initiation for, adult, for of adults, for our, can, our catechumens, Jessica Kalala and um, Valerie Marola, for our candidates, Muriel Prusnell and Vincent Rebar, and for our candidate for confirmation, uh, Dayton Grace, uh, Grassmeyer, may they continue to walk in the Lord and grow always closer to him. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our deceased relatives and friends, especially Edwin Baldwin and Marianne Cobus, may they find peace and rest in eternal union with our merciful Father. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the 50th anniversary of Judy and Mike Halter life, for which this Mass is offered, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. <clears throat> Lord our God, we praise you for your Son, Jesus Christ. He is Emmanuel, the hope of the peoples. He is the wisdom that teaches and guides us. He is the Savior of every nation. Lord God, let your blessing come upon us as we light the candles of this wreath. May the wreath and its light be a sign of Christ's promise to bring us salvation. May he come quickly and not delay. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please join in singing our offertory hymn number 279. Our second collection is for maintenance.
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hand. For praise and glory of his name. Accept, we pray, O Lord, these offerings we make, gathered from among your gifts to us. And may what you grant us to celebrate devoutly here below gain for us the prize of eternal redemption. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For he assumed at his first coming the lowliness of human flesh, and so fulfilled the design you formed long ago, and opened for us the way to eternal salvation, that when he comes again in glory and majesty, and all was at last made manifest, we who watch for that day may inherit the great promise in which now we dare to hope. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your Church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, 
so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Bernadette and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis our Pope and David our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory. Through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with you. And now let us offer another sign of praise. Peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most blessed sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. 
since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally. Come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
Have a seat. Not you. You come with me. Your furniture. Not you either. You two stand up. So Mike and Judy are celebrating 50 years of wedded bliss. Officially yesterday was the anniversary, right? Friday. Friday. Like, is it the third already? Wow. Okay, so on Friday they celebrated 50 years of wedded bliss, so we're going to ask God's blessing on them. We praise you, O God. We bless you, creator of all things, who in the beginning made man and woman, that they might form a communion of life and love. We also give you thanks for graciously blessing the family life of your servants, Mike and Judy, so that it might present an image of Christ's union with the church. Therefore, look with kindness upon them today, and as you have sustained their communion amid joys and struggles, renew their marriage covenant each day, increase their charity, and strengthen in them the bond of peace, so that together with the circle of their children that surrounds them, they may forever enjoy your blessing. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. You may now kiss your bride. I asked him what the secret was. He said patience. Do you want to back that up? She agrees with that. See, this is why I never got married, because I don't have any patience. Anyway, you guys can sit. Join us for Solemn Vespers this Sunday, December 3rd, and every Sunday in Advent except for Christmas Eve, beginning at 6 p.m. in Penn Hills. We will celebrate the Light is On for you on Wednesday, December the 13th, from 6 to 9 p.m. in both churches. There will be extra priests here. We will also offer an Advent penance service on Sunday, December 17th, from 3.30 to 5.40 p.m. here in Monroeville. If you took a tag from the giving tree, we ask you to return it prior to December the 11th. There's more detail in the bulletin. This Friday is the Solemnity of the Immaculate Conception. This is a holy day of obligation. See the bulletin for Mass times. All night at our Eucharistic Adoration will follow the 7 p.m. Mass on Friday here in Monroeville, ending at, 7, at 9 a.m. on Saturday. Please sign up for slots and adoration by going to the parish website. Let us pray. May these mysteries, O Lord, in which we have participated, profit us, we pray. For even now, as we walk amid passing things, you teach us by them to love the things of heaven and hold fast to what endures. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Bow down for the blessing. To each of these three invocations, please respond with an amen. May the almighty and merciful God, by whose grace you have placed your faith in the first coming of his only begotten Son and yearn for his coming again, sanctify you by the radiance of Christ's advent and enrich you with his blessing. Amen. As you run the race of this present life, may he make you firm in faith, joyful in hope, and active in charity. Amen. So that rejoicing now with devotion at the Redeemer's coming in the flesh, you may be endowed with the rich reward of eternal life when he comes again in majesty. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. Amen. Go now proclaim the gospel of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.